In the 1300s, Western Europe began to experience a cultural revolution known as the Renaissance, or rebirth. The Renaissance began in Italy with the rediscovery of the writings and art of ancient Greece and Rome. This led to an explosion of new art, science, architecture, literature, and ideas. During the Middle Ages, it was the church that had preserved and advanced learning. The study of religion and the afterlife had dominated the work of medieval scholars. But in the Renaissance, scholars turned their attention to the human experience and individual achievement in the here and now. Italy was at the heart of the Renaissance. In Florence and other Italian cities, the study of the humanities, history, literature, the fine arts and philosophy flourished. Renaissance thinkers had a wide-ranging curiosity. In fact, the Renaissance ideal was the person with talent in many fields. Examples of great Renaissance thinkers include Galileo, the astronomer, mathematician, and physicist who proved Copernicus' theory that the Earth revolves around the Sun. Leonardo da Vinci, one of history's greatest creative minds. He drew plans for many modern machines centuries before they were invented. Michelangelo was a sculptor, painter, architect, and poet. He created some of the world's greatest works of art, like this statue of the biblical figure, David. Another Renaissance Italian, Niccolo Machiavelli, wrote a treatise on effective leadership that would make him famous to some, infamous to others. Machiavelli was a former diplomat who had observed kings and princes in the courts of Europe. He is best remembered for his book, The Prince, the Prince is a guidebook for how leaders can gain and keep power. Written in 1532, the book deals with politics at a time when Italian city-states were dominated by ruthless leaders and power struggles. Machiavelli urged rulers to use whatever methods were necessary to achieve their political goals. The Prince wasn't based on high ideals, but on the reality Machiavelli saw around him. The 26 chapters of The Prince cover everything from how to appear to be compassionate to advice on selecting a political staff. According to Machiavelli, the three main qualities a prince should possess are the abilities to act boldly, to protect his power, and to appear unwavering while being flexible. At certain particular moments, which he calls the founding or refounding of a regime, you will need a leader with exceptional intelligence, with the intelligence of a Lincoln, with the intelligence of a Washington, with the intelligence of a Bonaparte. Machiavelli stressed two sets of attributes for the prince. One um, was very colorful. He used the image of the, of the fox and the lion. The prince must have the ability of the fox to find the snare and the courage of the lion to drive off the wolves. In order to maintain his state, a prince is often forced to act in defiance of good faith, of charity, of kindness, of religion. He should not deviate from what is good, if that is possible, but he should know how to do evil if that is necessary. Machiavelli advised rulers to retain their power by any means necessary, which meant being ruthless, calculating, and unhampered by morality. Many see these lessons as a guide to becoming a tyrant and many rulers use them this way. Machiavelli is very clear that the end is what counts. He says this in a number of places, and it seems to us a very tough argument. But one man's tyrant is another's fearless leader. Political thinkers from dictators to presidents have read The Prince and taken their own lessons from it. There are certain books which are sufficiently complicated that they have a message for different people in different times because somehow they've touched at an aspect of fundamental human experience. Machiavelli's Prince is a book like that. It deals with an aspect of human life in a very profound way. The central aspect being the role of leaders and why leaders are necessary in any complicated human community. The Renaissance inspired Machiavelli to explore the political world he knew and how an individual leader should act in it. Whether it's a how-to book for tyrants or a realistic portrayal of politics, the prince continues to raise important ethical issues about government and the proper uses of power in the world today.